Thanks for tuning back into the channel. This week we're going to be looking at a type of review of the Fujifilm X-T5. I've had the camera now for over a year and I've been shooting solely with that. My decision to go from full frame to APS-C, it wasn't a light decision that I made. So I wanted a system that I could cut down and still give me the images that I wanted and that became the X-T5 for the past year. Now the images from that I am more than happy with. When you first get a camera, you want to push the capabilities of the camera to see if it suits your photography. So that's what I did, and that's why during this you're going to see a whole load of images. Hopefully I've leveled all the horizons, if there's any seascapes there. But you're going to see a load of images, and some of them, as I say, straight out of camera, some of them edited files. So hopefully that will keep your interest while listening to me telling you about my experience with the camera. 40 megapixel APS-C sensor. All those megapixels crammed into a small APS-C sensor. So you wonder, does it work? And the answer to that is yes, it does work. Fuji, when the camera first came out, released a lens list uh, of the optimum lenses to be used with the system. Now, when I first saw that, I thought, oh, here they go, they're just trying to get more money out of everybody. Just, oh, we'll just tell you this lens is better. But that is genuinely not the case. I've been very fortunate over the year to try out quite a few of these lenses that were on the list, and they do use the sensor really, really well. As with every camera, nothing is perfect. So I'm not going to sing the praises of it and say, oh, it's the best camera since sliced bread, if you've ever heard that expression. It's a camera. It's a tool to do the job. And it's a tool to do the job that you want it to do, that you need it to do, whether that's landscape, portrait, pet photography, whatever it is. You have to get the best out of the camera that you're using. You have to learn that camera and learn the lenses and, and know its optimum capabilities. I've invested in my own lenses throughout the, this year for the system. Uh, I've also sold some lenses due to the fact that I believe they don't use the sensor as well, not something that's been subconsciously programmed into me. But for example, one of my favourite lenses is a 10 to 24. Now I had the original version of that and not the weather sealed version, but I don't think optically they are any different. I could be wrong in that, but I don't think they are. I think they just refined the casing of it slightly and weather sealed it. So, but the reason I sold that is because I didn't think it performed as well on the X-T5 as it did the X-T4 or the X-T3 at 26 megapixels. Now that's personal opinion and that's the one thing that I'm going to is going to run through this entire video, to be honest with you. It's down to your photographic needs and what you need from a camera. For whatever type of photography you do, whether that's portraiture, landscapes, animals, whatever it is you do, a camera is the tool that you use to capture the images that you need that you will be happiest with. So that could be any. So for me this year, I've invested in the Fuji X-T5 and the lens ecosystem. I, I think I've got now six lenses in total and every one of them's performed great. Except for one, and that was the 18 to 135, which I think performed exceptionally well on the X-T4 and the X-T3. I don't think it performs as good on the X-T5. Video from two weeks ago, uh, the focusing video, they were all shot with the 18 to 135 and the images are fine. They're fine. But at the same time, I think had I shot them in the X-T4 or the X-T3, I think they would have been a tiny bit better. But again, that's just through me trying to remember how well it performed with those two. So the lens ecosystem are the recommended lenses that Fuji said to get. They did that for a reason and genuinely from my experience anyway, you can see why they said that. There is third party lenses and there's great third party lenses out there. Uh, the Sigma ones, I haven't tried any Tamron ones, but the Sigma ones, they're great lenses on this camera. They, they use the sensor and you get really sweet images from it. And that's a great thing. It's great that Fuji and other camera manufacturers are allowing you to use 
third party lenses and still getting great quality from them so don't if you're thinking of investing in the xt5 don't be put off by just what i've said there about the fuji recommends these lenses they do it for a reason but other lenses work just as well third party lenses work just as well so don't be put off by what i'm saying there The camera itself is slightly smaller than the previous incarnations, X-T4 and X-T3, but not significantly so. I have an L bracket on it just because of the size of my hands. I also have the small rig cage, which has a phenomenal grip on it. The small rig cage, for me, has been the best grip that MD's ever created. I wish they would create an L bracket with the same size of grip. But these are just accessories to the camera itself. Does the camera perform? Yes, the camera performs excellently, in my opinion. At 40 megapixels, that's a lot of megapixels to fit into an APS-C camera. The images that you get from the 40 megapixel APS-C sensor are great images. Uh, they're sharp, there's a lot of details, a lovely dynamic range within them. Have I bracketed a few images? Yes. Uh, have a shot to the highest ISO as well. Yes, they're not usable. Uh, but the image quality from this camera, considering it is an APS-C camera, it is really, really good. And I think everybody that says it's the best in the market, I think they're quite right to say that as well. Although I haven't tried other systems to see what they're like in APS-C, I have moved up through the Fuji ecosystem and this one by far for me has been the best if you're considering getting this camera i would have no hesitations at all in recommending it the caveat for me for this is the not the camera itself it's the fact that i tried the gfx i've been very fortunate yet again to be able to test and review these cameras for f-stoppers and they've allowed me to put it on this channel as well and that's been my caveat i came from full frame and to aps-c and it was intentional as i mentioned i was using the nikon z72 less and less because i just really really loved using this camera and then I tried the GFX, and I tried the GFX with some of the lenses from its ecosystem. And I enjoyed editing them more than I enjoyed editing the images from the X-T5. Now that's a personal thing, I really enjoy my image editing, I do, I really enjoy it. I try and balance things out so that I'm out. 80% of the time and 20% editing. But when I was sitting down and editing, I found I was spending more time, and not because it was a bad photograph, it was because of the quality of the image that you were getting for the, the GFX. And the sensor, yes, there is a massive increase in sensor size. And the two cameras are not comparable in any way at all. But when it comes down to personal photography and what you need from a camera system. So I'm now sitting wondering what way to go now for uh, my photography. And that's the way it should be for you as well. It should be for you, for your photography. Me saying the X-T5 is the best APS-C camera ever made. Yeah, that's right, it is. Uh, but <laughs> uh, it doesn't make it so just because someone says it. You have to try everything for yourself. Ergonomics, when you're in post-production, is the post-production and the images and the quality of images you're getting from the camera, are you getting everything you need from it? Now, I do this. I do photography myself. I teach it during the week at college. And then for myself, I create like, these YouTube videos and then I, I shoot other work and I do workshops as well. I love the X-T5, I love the images it produces, I love the range of lenses you can get for it. For me, I'm going to say I need a wee bit extra and that's the best way I can put it. I need something a wee bit extra and that's simply because 
I was spoiled with the GFX. I was really spoiled with the GFX. So it's maybe something I can work up to. I need it for different reasons. And that's what photography should be. It should be for the reasons you need it. You shouldn't invest in a system simply just because everyone tells you to. That could be no good for you whatsoever. Hopefully all that made sense. I know I went off on a tangent there about my own photography. But that's what a camera should be and that's what a system should be. It should be for your photography. Would I recommend the X-T5? Oh, I wholeheartedly, yes, I would. I, you will have no regrets getting an X-T5 if you decide to upgrade to an X-T5. No regrets whatsoever if you're coming across from another system. You will have no regrets. It's a phenomenal system. I absolutely love it. But just because I'm saying that, it could be absolutely rubbish for you and not meet the needs of you as a photographer. So you've got to think about that as well, as well as the financial implications of whatever system you invest in. Thanks again for watching. Take care and I'll see you in the next video.